It's September 10th, Tuesday. I'm Jennifer Palumbo along with sports anchor Keith Farmer. It's good to have you here. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I've always wanted to be a part of the show in some way and uh, now that you're here and we've got a connection here that we'll talk about in a minute, we, we get a chance to do that finally. We do. Keith and I go way back, back to the beginning. <laughs> don't, don't make it that far back. Well, yeah, it's, but it has been a while. My first on-air TV job was at WYMT yeah. in Hazard, Kentucky. I'm from Cincinnati, but yeah. came to Hazard to get my TV start and while I was there, I got to get to know you because you were there working in sports. I was in news. Yes, correct. And, and it seems like just yesterday, but I, I know it was <laughs> forever ago. Uh, but it was just, you know, just special time to, to get to start your career and, and to learn about this business. And funny how not many of us have gone too far away and, and get a chance now to work together. And there's a real pipeline, too, from WYMT. I had oh. Angie Bevan as a co-host. She Correct. worked at WYMT. Yeah. And so, you know, we got our start there. And while you and I were both there, I, I have some pictures here that oh, I no. dug up from the archives. Take a look <laughs> at this. So this was when I wished you a happy birthday. But I want to point out the one on the right, that is Keith Farmer and Tim Couch. And one of the cool things that I got to do while I was at WYMT was I would go out with you all on sports stories yeah. and we got to cover Tim Couch as a quarterback at Leslie County High School. There's a picture of us. This is a slightly more recent photo. This was once we both came to Lexington together and Correct. we were covering. That was a Derby Eve party. Anita Madden's legendary parties. That might have been the year that Carrie Fisher was there, but those parties were epic. Uh, I mean, it's <laughs> some of the most amazing uh, times that <laughs> I've never seen. been to parties like that before. <laughs> I think you got to go to New York City or to yes. LA to see parties like those. And uh, luckily enough, uh, you know, got to wear the tux that I night know. as well. We, we got all dressed up. But the Tim, the Tim Couch one, I just love Should, this. I mean, his his hair, your hair. I'm just going to point out that's me on the left, just so you know there in the white shirt. I, I know there's you could be confusion. And, and this this was, we didn't even have cell phones. This was pre-cell phone. That's how old this photo is. I think I got my first phone while I was in Hazard, and it yeah. was the bag phone that's that you exactly plugged right. into the lighter, and I had my 606 <laughs> phone number, and... You know, I just, Eastern Kentucky, I have so many great memories of our time there and, yeah. you know, just so many wonderful people to cover. Tim Couch yeah. and, you know, how, you know, how many big stories came oh, out of our short time that sure. we were there. Yeah, I got to cover J.R. Van Hoos and that, those Paintsville teams and Charles Thomas and Harlan that came yes. through and won all A's. And then, of course, Tim Couch, and that was so neat. I just... Uh, learning how to cover a, a, a kid who's getting ready to, to make a major impact in his life and make a decision on where he's going to play and, and had every school in the country wanting him. So uh, it was a lot of fun to, to know him from his sophomore year in high school uh, to today. And I know you all told me he's going to be huge, so come to the games <laughs> because you're going to someday and then coming to Lexington and yeah. then he comes to Kentucky. So that was that was one of the cool experiences that we fun. shared. Yes. And of course, one of the biggest stories that people are still talking about today involves Kentucky football. Here's what's on now. We're learning more about what's next for UK quarterback Terry Wilson, who was out for the season after being injured in Saturday's win over Eastern Michigan. He has a torn patellar tendon and will have surgery and then he will start rehab. So yesterday, Coach Mark Stoop said he expects Terry to make a full recovery. His ligament and cartilage are all fine. And Keith, there are also questions about whether he could apply for a medical red shirt, which is not an option, right? Correct, because he had already red shirted. He had already gone, gone through, um, you know, with Oregon and everything and sitting out and coming to Kentucky. So not an option for him. Really, the good news in all this is that it was the patellar tendon because you have an MCL or uh, you know PCL, ACL, whatever it may be, you're going to be hurting and out for much longer, and the rehab so much more difficult. So with this, we saw a player like Darius West who had right. a very similar Coach injury. Coach talked about that, and he came right back and looked better than ever, really, to be honest, in his senior season for Kentucky. So the defensive back uh, for Kentucky. So I, I think we're going to see him bounce back and be able to play next year. It will be his final year, yeah. but he will very likely be back to 100% and ready to go. It's just, it still hurts to see that he's not oh. going to be there and to go out this early in the season. You know, too. You, you know, he put in all that work during the off season, during the spring, the summer, and going out and throwing with all the wide receivers. And so, yeah, it's super disappointing for him. Uh, you, all you can do is just accept it for what it is. And I've seen it with so many, many players through the years that I've covered. You, you just got to put in the rehab work come back and be stronger yeah, and, and wish, accept it more mentally. Wishing you know? him the best, yes. yes. And now it's next man up. 
Yeah, Sawyer Smith, no doubt about it. He's the guy that's going to get that start at Kentucky on Saturday. What and a test. How about a chance to go <laughs> up against the Florida Gators after Kentucky knocked them off last year. Coach Stoops went out and uh, courted Sawyer Smith to come to Kentucky from Troy. Where, where else? The Florida native. Yes. How, how ironic is that? Played for former UK coordinator Neil Brown down at Troy. Sawyer Smith made a name for himself there with 15 Division One touchdowns in half a year. Played about seven games there. Played a little over uh, a little in Saturday's win over Eastern Michigan. Five passes uh, completed out of nine attempts, 76 yards and two touchdowns. And how about this? His first pass was 54 yards. To Ahmad Wagner for a touchdown, and I'm telling you, he floated that thing beautifully in there for the touchdown. Uh, and it also included a flag, obviously, because it was Wagner involved. <laughs> uh, I, I said, you know, with Wagner, they just need to just keep passing it yeah. to Wagner because he draws those yeah. flags, and you know, Coach Stoops is fine with yeah. that as well. Yeah. He wants that as well. Now, here's another thing that was really neat with Sawyer Smith: first pass at Kentucky, 54 yards; first pass at Troy. 47 yards for a touchdown. Okay. So he brought that up after the game as well when and, you know, we asked about that. And let's hope his first pass and his first start at Kentucky <laughs> is a touchdown pass as well against Florida. No matter the yardage, <laughs> a touchdown pass would be great. Yes. Well, you know, there's another UK football player who is, he's just been inspiring people across yeah. the country, and it's Kentucky linebacker Josh Pascal, and he's being honored again for his courage. You may remember he missed most of last season. He was being treated for skin cancer, but he is back this season. And the sophomore outside linebacker is one of the first players nominated for College Football's Comeback Player of the Year Award, sponsored by the Mayo Clinic. He was diagnosed with malignant melanoma last year, underwent his final cancer treatment last month. And Keith, his season's off to a great start. The first two games, Kentucky's wins, nine tackles, three for a loss. So he has not missed a beat this season and you know we're just everybody's rooting for him but to be able to have to deal with all of that and still be able to come back and play just says a lot about him his work ethic and you know how how hard he wants to be out there playing he's such an inspirational person yes because of what he went through and knowing he was going to miss probably the year as he ended up he came back and played a couple of games but to, to do what he did just as a person. Now, you know, you add in the fact that he's a player. And he, and he even got caught one time, Cash Daniels telling the story, before he had that final treatment this year, he was in the, the weight room getting a <laughs> lift on, and Coach White came in, Brad White came in, and was like, what are you doing? You got your treatment tomorrow. You know, it says so, it says so yeah. much about him, you know, and also with Coach Slarman. I was going to say that, that, too. that You know, he, his battle against cancer yeah. and that he continues to work and hasn't missed a beat and the team really rallying yeah. behind both of them and, and Big Blue Nation as well, just cheering them on. It probably puts a lot of things in perspective for these players right. and, and even the coaches when they see these two guys fighting uh, as they have for the last year. Yeah. Well, how about this? California could change the game for college athletes. The California State Assembly passed a bill yesterday that would let players sign endorsement deals. It's called the Fair Pay to Play Act. Cleared the assembly by a vote of 72 to zip. It's now headed to the governor who can sign that into law. Mm -hmm. A version had already passed in the Senate in May. Now, if the governor signs it, that law would go into effect January of 2023. None of the bill's provisions involve schools paying athletes directly. It would only prohibit those schools in California from having any trouble with scholarships, revoking scholarships right. or anything like that, or scholarship eligibility from athletes who profit off their own name and image and likeness. So, And guess who's against this? Who? You? The NCAA. Oh, well, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, though, some of the universities in California yeah. are as well, but this has been an argument about, yeah. you know, that the universities, the Sports networks are all making money off these players that yeah. maybe it's time that these players get an opportunity to cash in as well. So, you know, this could be something California taking the first step, you know, that athletes may look at and, and you know, you would think that would have to be a recruiting advantage yeah, well, for Mark, some. Mark Emmert with the NCAA, he, he said he tried to get California to hold off for just a little bit. Yes. Let us go through our... You know, we're going to look into this. Let us make the rules. We're gonna, no, they, they wanted <laughs> yeah. to look into it. They, they yeah. were checking, but, you know, how, how quick are they to act, you know, it could right. have been three or they four just years. They want to punt it down the road for exactly, yes, and hope exactly. that it goes away. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. He did say, though, that if California passes this, it's signed, it could mean some probation trouble. Yeah, you know, These teams may not be able to play in NCAA championships, so it could be trouble, or it could be or a it, recruiting or it could advantage. Be the beginning, <laughs> or it could be the and beginning be of the many beginning. other states getting Correct. behind it. Well, this is the toddler hug that has been seen and heard around the world today. 26-month-old Maxwell and 27-month-old Finnegan. 
They run into each other, embracing in a hug. This is so sweet. It's all caught on camera, and of course, it's going viral. Maxwell's dad says the two-year-olds were on their way home with their dads when they saw each other on the sidewalk and just went running for one another. They've known each other for more than a year now. They both live in the same neighborhood, so they get to have regular play dates, and they just started riding the same bus to daycare together every morning. At last check, this has gotten more than 300 shares, 6,500 views, and it's no wonder because it's just something that you look at and it just makes you smile. Just the pure joy of childhood. Is it dusty in here or something? I, I don't know. know. My, 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 uh, my allergies are, are eyes flaring are running up a little, little bit. bit. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's just a beautiful picture, and, and you've seen uh, a lot of people tweet out, uh, you know, that you can tell now that, that racism is a taught thing. I mean, because these kids, and you've seen some other photos and some other videos like this where kids just go and embrace each other, and there's no worries in the world. No. They just want to share the love between the two of them yeah. and, and the friendship, and I think it's a beautiful moment that we see there. True friendship. It really is a great <laughs> moment. Well, Kentucky Fried Chicken and Spirit Halloween are teaming up to turn KFC founder Colonel Harlan Sanders' iconic white suit into an official limited edition Halloween costume. It's available in adult and youth sizes and includes the button front jacket and attached shirt, dress pants, facial hair, glasses, and a wig. A bucket of KFC's famous fried chicken not included. The costume is available <laughs> in Spirit Halloween stores and on spirithalloween.com. I could see this is something that would definitely catch on. It's come, a good looking costume, too. Come on, though. Shouldn't you get a coupon or something if you buy the costume? Or, or, I mean, or at, for least, at, least, at least just a bucket of maybe like the plastic chicken that your kids had in their little yeah. kitty fridges. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I love the idea, though. And as many people as we've seen go in there and, and play that part in the commercials, I think just about anybody can pull this off. Yep. Now you can do it for Halloween. <laughs> All right, fans of the game show Jeopardy don't have to wait to catch the live show. They can test their own knowledge while they drive. I don't, maybe a good, I don't know. The show, though, is releasing a hands free voice based app hosted by Alex Trebek himself. The questions come from actual Jeopardy games over its past 35 seasons. You can play a free trial game when you download the Drive Time app from the App Store or Google Play Store. The new game is out just in time for the start of the 36th season of Jeopardy. It's the season that kicked off Monday, just a few days after Trebek announced that he had finished treatment for pancreatic cancer. Um, I love the fact that it's, you know, voice activated. Yes. You don't have to pick anything and choose anything. And how but, and how far have we come from when we were kids and you know you, you were lucky if you had just a coloring book or something in the back seat. Now yeah. you have a Jeopardy app to keep the kids entertained in uh, the back seat. That's a game that always uh, you know intimidates me anyway. I know. Those, those people are so smart and uh, you know and I'm a sports guy. Yeah. What will they think of next? Though? <laughs> Well, speaking of games, a new makeover of a classic board game is celebrating women's empowerment. Ms. Monopoly is an upgrade of Hasbro's Monopoly. The version features female players who make more money than their male challengers. Women collect 240 Monopoly bucks every time they pass go. Meanwhile, the men still get the usual 200 bucks. Another change, players don't buy property, but rather invest in inventions created by women. Ms. Monopoly is available for pre-order beginning today. This is, I could see this is something, you know, just a little twist on it. And I am all for women making more money than men. How about you? Women empowerment. <laughs> Me too movement, yes. The, the, safe, an the safe answer. Yes, good yes. Job, no, Keith. I think it'll be good for the young ladies <laughs> to have a, a game to play like that. I yeah. do. Yeah. Well, there's a new collectible doll coming to store shelves this week. The Dia de los Muertos Barbie represents the Mexican Day of the Dead Festival honoring departed loved ones. Mattel, the toy company that owns the Barbie brand, says the doll honors the traditions, symbols, and rituals seen throughout this time. The Day of the Dead Barbie sells for $75, and you can find it Thursday at Target, Walmart, or on Amazon. Well, freshly baked goods, brunch, and a workout for mom. Sounds like fun. It does. <laughs> Epping's on East Side is offering a new way to help moms get fit and entertain the family at the same time. It's on next. <laughs>